Hey guys, so it's Britt here and I just want to redo all my Venus sign videos because I kind of did a couple years ago like the signs in love and it was sort of like sun signs, it's sort of Venus signs, but I really want to talk more just about Venus signs so I'm going to do them all again. And in this video I'm going to talk about Venus and Aries which I already actually have two videos on. But the first one that I did just really about Venus and Aries, I did it when Uranus was conjunct my natal Venus and Aries. And I swear to God, when I watch that video back, I am talking about Uranus Venus, not just Venus and Aries. So now that Uranus has passed the conjunction from my Venus, I want to do a proper video on Venus in Aries. So this is my placement. I have Venus in Aries. So I know a little bit about it. And it's in my first house, so actually I really identify with this placement a lot. So when we have Venus in Mars' sign, we have some aggressive lovers. And these people are very direct about what they want. And usually they do know what they want in life. This isn't a person who's going around wondering, who am I? You know, what do I want in life? No, these people know what it is that they want and they are after it. But how they go after it is going to be shown by their Mars sign. But they're, they're pretty content and know who they are and what they want and their sense of self is very focused on love relationships as well too they they get a lot out of a love relationship they can seem like they're in love with love or always in love with a new person like they're always um in that beginning stage of a relationship where everything is wonderful and and they're in love but then Something happens and they either break it off or the other person breaks it off and they start a new one and they're, they're, they're never um, in a state of heartbreak for too long unless they have some sort of Pisces Neptunian thing going on. Another thing, socially they're usually very out there and they don't hold back. This is usually the person who says something hilarious like and sometimes they can be kind of lacking in social graces as well like they don't really give a fuck in some social situations and it's not that they don't give a fuck but they they want to be liked by people but they just don't even think about how they're coming off to others this isn't someone who checks and sees how the other person is feeling first and sort of feels out you know the vibe and then talks and acts this is the kind of person that projects out first and then notices how people are responding to them and um, even then doesn't really notice how people are responding to them they still keep projecting out um, so you get a person who's very authentically themselves and it's not that they don't care how other people see them, it's just they don't take that into consideration before they take an action, okay? Um, unless they have a lot of Libra or Pisces somewhere in their chart. But um, another thing is like, in relationships, they like to take the lead. And the women even also can like to take the lead. And um, they, are forward they they're forward with you they're right in your face they're telling you right away how hot and awesome you are and why you should come on this amazing adventure of love with them and they don't hold back even if they feel afraid deep down about being so forward and maybe they feel like they're kind of shy that shy bone in their body is going to be thrown to the curb when they are after someone they will go for you and when they're not after you, there is nothing that you can do to um, change their minds about it. They're very single-pointed when it comes to relationships. They want that one, and they're going to go after that one. And they might continue to go after someone even long after it's been clear that that person is not into it. And they, they still are after them. Um, and they're not hurt by this. They just, they enjoy it. They love the chase. They love chasing people. And Venus, they say, can lose its sweetness in this sign. Like, 
there's not really a sweet bone in these people's body unless you find someone being so unapologetically themselves um, and in your face is sweet. And some people do. Um, people with fire in their chart, you know, are going to respect this, like, honesty. And it's also like an innocence. There is an innocence about these people. They just go for it. They just go for you. And they believe in love. And they believe in the newness of it. And they they know that that something better is always coming. They And they enjoy life. And they're fun. Oh my god, to have these people around at a party. They're the life of the party. They're hilarious. And even if they're not particularly outgoing, like they have some hard Saturn or something, there's something about these people that just glows. And actually, Jeffrey Wolf Green, in his relationships book, states that the Venus and Aries person exerts like a strong pheromone or something like so literally like they're giving off this like sex vibe to people and people just want to fuck them and like so you can be a Venus and Aries person and maybe not even looking your best and just kind of like whatever and you're you're sending off this sex vibe to people and you can attract selfish people who who want to just have sex with you but I I just want to tell you guys that I firmly believe that we attract what we are so Venus and Aries person if you are attracting people that are selfish and just want to have sex with you take a look at yourself because it is likely that you are a little bit selfish oh my god I'm so sorry oh, oh my god you're selfish I'm sorry you probably already know that. Like, in love, I know it seems like you're putting all this energy and attention into the other person, and you do at the beginning, but you love through yourself. Like, you're more excited for the relationship because of what it's doing for your ego and how much fun it's going to be for you than actually the other person. And sometimes you're not even thinking about the other person at all. You're not considering how they're feeling or anything. You you are in your perfect dream fun world where everything's about you and you love love and you're so excited. And there's nothing wrong with that. You are an extremely positive person at times. Um, and yeah, the sex part, like if you're attracting people that, that just want to have sex with you, it's rare to find a Venus and Aries person who also looks up, or doesn't look at people as like a sex toy, okay? And um, people are probably going to hate me for this. And honestly, I'm sorry. Like, I just have to speak my truth. And Venus and Aries people are very sexual and do see other people in terms of how much fun it would be to have sex with them. And it's not like you're purposely doing this, but just think about it. Like when you see a hot person, what are you thinking? Are you thinking about how much fun it's going to be to live the rest of your life with them? Actually, you might be thinking that too, because you can kind of jump the gun on things. But are you also thinking about how much fun it would be to fuck them? Okay, and just be honest with me. And, you know, I might be a little bit offensive here to you Venus and Aries people that have, you know, placements in Cancer or Pisces and you're not so um, out there with this energy. But on some level, there is a part of you that loves sex because you see the innocence of it. Like, it's not like the deep, dark sex of Scorpio. This is the sex of creation. This is the sex for the fun of it. Like, it is so fun and exciting to be with a new person and have sex with them. And you get off on the idea of someone getting off on you. And you love sex. I really, like, whenever I see a person with Venus and Aries, or Venus and Scorpio, but that's a totally different story. We'll get there. It's like, there is this innocence and this pure sexual energy that's not tainted by what will people think of me if I do this or you know what are the rules like do I need to wait for a certain number of days before I have sex these things don't usually go through a person with Venus and Aries's head maybe they do if they're considering other people's opinions 
more than their own, which is rare because I don't think people of Venus and Aries really do that. We we know what we want and we go for it. Even if everybody in the whole world said, that's not a good idea, Venus and Aries, you probably shouldn't go for that person. Venus and Aries person is going to go for it anyways because it's... It's not a logical placement to have Venus. It's very in the heat of the moment. Like, I feel a passion and I want to act on it. And um, if you can relate to this, Venus and Aries, send me a comment. Tell me what you think of this. I'm just being brutally honest here about what I have experienced with Venus and Aries and also what I've read and what I've seen in, in other people that have this. So, yeah, there is this, this sexiness and people are just going to think, that you're hot for no reason and you might not actually be like the most physically hottest person around but other people are just going to notice your energy and it's because you're giving off this sort of sex vibe and um yeah Jeffrey Wolf Green says there's kind of an inner like narcissism that people with Venus and Aries have and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either it's because we're at the start of a new evolutionary cycle here for love we are learning how to relate to people once we've actually found ourselves first, which is an amazing thing, really. But, I mean, what you got to watch out for is being so selfish in a relationship and only doing what pleases you and, you know, on a whim, getting in relationships and on a whim, getting out of relationships and not considering other people's feelings at all. We are learning to consider other people's feelings. But once we've sort of found this delicate balance in um, being totally selfish and then thinking of other people's feelings, we can actually have some of the best relationships because we're not going to fully ever give ourselves over to someone and lose our independent life. Or even if we did do that, it would be for a brief moment in time because Venus and Aries people always will keep the sense of identity that is separate from the relationship. This is me over here and this is you over here. And it's never going to fully merge. So, like, you know the saying, like, you can't really love someone until you actually love yourself or whatever it is like that? Venus and Aries person can actually do love from a balanced perspective because they have self-love. They do think of themselves first. And so when they are ready for a real relationship, it can actually be balanced and good. So that's the good thing about Venus and Aries there. And um, once they overcome the, like, too self, you don't want to be, like, so self that you can't even, like, hear or see what anybody else is doing, <laughs> which you can do that, but um, you don't want to fully do that. And it seems like a lot of people with Venus and Aries really learn lo the lessons of love early on. They learn not to be so selfish. They learn how to get over heartbreak because, yeah, here's the reason, too, like, Venus and Aries get in a relationship quickly. And they can experience more potential heartbreaks because they fully throw themselves all into it, okay? They don't hold back. Whereas other Venus signs might sort of be like testing the waters. Oh, I want to make sure that I don't get hurt. Venus and Aries doesn't give a fuck if they're going to get hurt. They, they're not even thinking about that. They're just going right in because it's so fun and exciting for them to jump right in, right? So they can experience more heartbreaks, but usually early on. So then they have this wisdom about love and they have this strong sense of self that they're actually ready for like a good real relationship at a younger age than, than some other people because they've had that experience because they're so willing to throw themselves into it. Another thing, last thing I just want to mention here is that they're super creative. And if, if they don't realize that, they need to realize this now because Venus is sort of, um, it can be our creative talents as well. It's what we find pleasing, it's what we value, and it's how we are in love. And I've been mostly talking about love here, and there's so much other good stuff too. Um, yeah, the type of art that they like, or the type of stuff they want to create, it's going to be sort of in-your-face aggressive. Like, they could like rock and roll, or loud music, whatever it is, make sure it's loud, and it's in-your-face, and their style of clothing bright in your face like hello look at my hot body they usually like being naked they like their bodies they're kind of comfortable with their body and with their their sex drive they're normal about their bodies and sex which is actually a hugely positive thing um and yeah they could be into like working out or like sports like 
Mars type activities, right? And they're going to appreciate someone who is direct, maybe a little bit aggressive, someone who is empowered and in control of their lives. That's going to really turn them on um, because they value what is Aries. They value people that are strong. And it's like kind of a contradiction. They're, they want to be the strong one in the relationship, but at the same time, they want you to also be strong. So it's best if you're just like pretty, pretty strong, but you do let them mostly take the lead and plan things in the relationship. Like you're just like, you're really strong, but you're just a little bit less strong than Venus and Aries. And then always stay exciting. Do fun things. Be a little bit of a surprise sometimes and that's gonna really turn on the Venus and Aries person and they like it quick they don't like long boring romantic conversations at candlelight they like fun action fun rough hard sex normal sex not all this like romantic stuff sometimes okay and other things in the chart can change this okay like this is just talking from an Aries rising, Venus and Aries in the first house person, Taurus, blunt and honest, but they could have other things that they do. They love romance, but what they actually value and what actually turns them on is not the romance stuff. They like the idea of that, but what actually turns them on is the action. It's like when you say, hey, this is what I'm going to do, and I don't care what you say. And then the Venus and Aries person is like, wow, fuck me. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. Um, I love you guys. I'd love to know what you think about this placement, what your experience has been. So let's talk, and I'll have all my links below if you want to work with me or join my Facebook Souls on Fire group where I go live and stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching, you guys. I love you. Britt. XO from Britt. Bye.